Hi, welcome back to Factutainment, where today's facts are about... You know what, I'm not going to be gross. We're playing Vampire Survivor again. Next up, that was good. It is, it's a good game. I, I don't know what else to say, you know? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, shit. First round fact is there's a radio show in the UK called The that has been on the air since 1951. Good for them. What are they talking Making about? Making the longest running radio soap opera ever. The dark lava cricket in Hawaii was excessively in recently cooled lava flows and entirely on wind blowed debris. It has been seen uh, less than a meter from active volcanic vents, but never more within 15 meters of any full grown established vegetation. Hmm. I wonder what that means. Tallinn is the biggest city. What? Establish vegetation means? No, 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 not, not, no, never mind, I'm being dumb. It means that that's a plant that has, like, roots and is growing. But what does it really mean? I'm kidding, no, I, I, I'm being dumb. Tallinn is the biggest city in the first national capital the world to offer free bus services for everybody. Mm. What's the shortest uh, city in the world, though? I don't know. Uh, I bet it's like Shortington or something. Teddy Roosevelt was the first uh, president to ever fly an airplane. Good for him. Did he survive? No. Oh, that makes me sad. <laughs> uh, there's blood-like rain that can happen, uh, that ha once happened in Kerala, India, caused by bacteria that turns the water red. Isn't there a water flow in the ant? Oh wait, no, that is that also is done by bacteria. I thought it was an iron deposit or something. You know about in Antarctica? Yeah, in Antarctica, like there's a there's like a, a blood river, uh, a blood. Called ice flow. blood falls. Yeah. Have we talked about this before? Yeah, uh, blood falls is an outflow of an uh, iron three oxide rich plume of salt water. Uh, falling from the tongue of the Taylor Glacier into the ice-covered surface of the West Lake Bowie in the Taylor Valley of McMurdo Bay Dry Valleys in Victoria Land, East Antarctica. The iron-rich hypersaline water sporadically emerges from small fissures in the ice uh, cascades and salt water sources from a subglacial pool of unknown size and an overlay by 400 meters or 1,300 feet of ice several kilometers from the, its tiny outlet at Blood Falls. Interesting. The deposit was found in 1911 by the Australian geologist Thomas Griffin Taylor, who explored the valley that bears its name. Hmm. The Dark Pioneers first traded with the red color to red algae, but it was later proven to be due to iron. I do love me some red algae. I think it's tasty. The falls. Oh, I, I know there's like a brand of pickles that I re I really want to try, but I I don't know I don't know if they deliver or not. They're they're like kelp pickles. Want to try kelp shake? Uh, 
Probably not. SpongeBob? Nah, the kelp shakes make you fuzzy. Sorry, furry. Here's the thing. If we ever get to the point, which I don't know if we will, but if we ever get to the point where we, like, have a house of our own, uh-huh. and we're still doing YouTube videos, uh-huh. I think it'd be neat to just do a thing where we try a bunch of weird food. And, yeah. like, either we try, we could do one where we, like, both eat it, and then we try and make it ourselves. I think that would be neat. And then compare it. And I'm talking about, like... Well, I guess it, trying to make our own spam might be interesting. <laughs> I'm just like... Okay. We somehow need to make meat into something that doesn't rot. <laughs> well, t- uh, so technically... I, w- and what's we the can't way? just smoke it and dry it and turn it well, here's the thing about spam. It's the, the only reason why it doesn't go bad is because of the canning, like like, like can, canning process. Once you get it out of the can, and like you let it sit, it, it goes bad. I should know. Yeah, but if you just take raw meat and can it, it's still gonna go bad in the can. Oh, I suppose you're right. Okay, now hang on. Now I'm curious. I'm gonna stand right here and let my character murder everything on screen. Uh, how to can meat? Uh, Hmm. Sorry, I oh, oh don't don't do that. <sighs> Sorry, one of my other cats just flopped down in front of my computer, but it's all good. So you still there? Yeah. All right. Uh, can meat is possible. It looks like, but. Not in the way that... Oh, wait. Hang on. Let's see. Uh... I know you can fish. You have to cook the fish differently. Yeah, yeah. From what... Uh... Can you water bath canned meat? No, you cannot water bath canned meat. No ex- uh, no exceptions. A water bath simply does not get to a high enough temperature to make food safe for storage. Do I have to use pressure canner to can meat? Yes, 100%. Okay, so you can can meat. You just need a pressure canner. Hmm. Richard. Yeah, I've been watching, if you can't tell, a lot of, like, binging with Babish and some other stuff. And, like, I'm not gonna hype myself up too much, but one of my regular forms of income is making baked goods en masse Mm -hmm. for a library that I take the food to, and then they sell it, and then we split the money. And I, like, earlier they made uh, probably 50 gamer cookies. Hell yeah. And then previously this week I made triple chocolate brownies, which kind of came out more like cake. Hell yeah. Because uh, it was that thick and moist. Apparently adding chocolate syrup adds a lot of moisture things. Hell yeah. Uh, and I also made uh, honey cookies and sugar cookies because the kids... At the library, I kept asking for cookies. Uh, I'm pretty good at making things if I have a recipe. I'm not good at, uh... Also, butterscotch blondies I made. And I made sweet potato pie. And... Which, I was kind of annoyed because the librarian was like, Yeah, for, to sell the sweet potato pie, we just started telling people it's pumpkin pie. And I'm like... So you just straight up lied to them? Yeah, you, you lie to people on the internet? It wasn't even on the internet, it was in person. I've honestly never had a uh, sweet potato pie before. Is it pretty good? Uh... 
it's all right. It's uh, it's kind of like the consistency of pumpkin pie, except for it's like more watery. Gotcha. Do what I need. So, Abby. Everything's on fire. Can't say if it's a safe bed or not. You know, I I'd love to fuck a Russian man. Yeah. I feel like that would be fun. Well, yeah, what's a really weird food you would like to try and recreate? <laughs> Bachelor Chow from Futurama. <sighs> Well, you could probably do that. I, I, because so, you know, like, off the top of my head. Because it just says, like, beefy flavor with gravy, right? Uh, I think so. I mean, from my and, understanding of... Um, so, what I imagine what Bachelor Trial would basically be is deconstructed and, like, dehydrated... Meat it's stirred. like biscuits and gravy, but instead of it being white gravy, it's just like regular meat gravy. Mm -hmm. That's I, what I'm imagining it would be. What's something weird that you want to recreate? From like fiction? Yeah. Hmm. How is it? I mean, it's just not that weird. It's the Krabby Patty, but like, I to make a crab burger. Uh, oh, it'd be like, interesting. Like, a, like a crab cake? I mean, it's not weird because I've literally already done but like, actually good KFC. Like, back when the recipe was good. I, I would like to think KFC is still pretty good. I don't know what you're talking about. I wonder if you could make. Uh, there really, there'd be really no way to compare it. But I was gonna be like, could you make? Like the rack of ribs from the Flintstones. <laughs> oh God, no! Not not like accurately. Oh well, yeah, and then it also got me down the rabbit hole of like, could you make a simulacrum of what a non-avian dinosaur would taste like? What? Using. Using various bird meats and probably like alligator <laughs> and a couple different things. The thing about like uh, the thing about like something like Triceratops. So it's going to be reptilian, mm -hmm. but it's also in many aspects avian. It's a herbivore. So you're gonna have, like, earthiness of, like, something that's fed off of, uh, vegetation. And it's a large, muscular, quadrupedal animal. So you're gonna have some of that characteristics of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just imagining, like, what, how would you, like, approximate a Triceratops? Uh, honestly, I think at the end of the day, the alligator would probably be the closest. Well, no, I'm saying you're gonna have to like, so it's like you're trying to make a triceratops broth. Mm -hmm. What animal meat would you throw in there to try and make a triceratops broth? Oh shit! I'm thinking you're probably gonna have to do some grass-fed poultry. Definitely. Uh, 
Triceratops did live in semi. Uh, it wasn't necessarily tropical, but like it's did. It was found a lot in wetlands, so maybe something like goose. I don't, I don't think I think duck would probably be too distinctive a flavor. Mm -hmm. So maybe goose. Throw in uh, probably like crocodile or alligator as well. And then you gotta like you gotta sneak in like. The grass fed, like, uh, quadrupedal animalness into it. I'm trying to imagine, like, what would be a mammal that's, like, not too distinctive a flavor to throw in there? Like, uh. Maybe some bison? I was thinking deer for some reason, like, like, venison. Maybe some bison, maybe some pork. Uh, and then, like... I don't know, you'd, you'd have to, like, do some... science Or approximation to it. I got it. Let's pull a Jurassic Park... Clone a Triceratops... Hunt it for sport and then eat its meat. Uh, you don't want to do the mammoth meatball? No, no, no. I, I, I would not have the. My stomach would not have the capacity to do that. No, you're talking about the, the actual mammoth meatball that they made. Wait, in, in Jurassic Park? No, in real life. Sorry, I, I, my, my brain's refusing to... Pr what do you mean the actual Mammoth Meatball in real life? Like, like d did we... Yeah, I'm pulling up. Because I... I'm pulling up the article for it. I, I know that at some point, uh, scientists did clone... Did they clone a woolly mammoth? So there's, uh, there's quite literally like an active de-extinction project going on uh, to resurrect the woolly mammoth, right? Uh -huh. I, yeah, I believe so. You, you talk about it a lot, so yes. Yeah. So there's like a bunch of uh, science course going into that, and I believe they're at the stage of like they're, they'll probably start artificially inseminating elephants soon if they haven't already. Sign me up. I don't know why I said that. Hey, I'm pulling up the meatball article. Okay, so when there's when talking about the mammoth meatball, there's three things. Uh -huh. So, it has been claimed that in one of the most infamous stories of the Explorers Club, that in Alaska in 1951, uh, well, no, the Explorers Club in 1951 had a banquet where they served meat from a frozen mammoth carcass that was found in Alaska. Uh -huh. And it, it apparently it tasted very freezer very bad. Uh, however, in 2016, a group of researchers genetically examined the sample of the meal and found it to belong to green sea turtle. Uh-huh. 
Uh, there was researchers who concluded the dinner had probably been a publicity stunt. At least that aspect of the dinner. In 2011, a Chinese paleontologist, Linda Zing, live-streamed uh, eating meat from a Siberian mammoth's leg that had been cooked and flavored with salt. She told the he told his audience that it tasted bad, like it was spoiled. Uh, no shit, Richard. This triggered a controversy and gained mixed reactions. It to promote science, and while the live stream was raising money for his uh, research station. In 2023, an Australian culture meat startup called Vow featured lab-grown mammoth meatball. Produced by using a DNA sequence from a woolly mammoth, the meat was grown in a lab and turned into a meatball. Uh, this sparked con conversations about the potential of cultured meat as a sustainable food source, highlighting its environmental impacts compared to traditional agriculture. Huh. So would you eat the mammoth meatball? I mean, I'd probably try it just for shits and giggles. Just say you ate mammoth? Yeah. Yeah. Like, How long have we been recording? Uh, about 20 minutes. Okay. Bye, guys, guys. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, everyone.